between 150 and 200 Rajneeshis living in and around Boulder. This is one of their biggest business, or it is their biggest business. Graphic arts, it's a graphic arts company that also puts out the American version of the Rajneeshi newspaper. It employs all of 10 people, small potatoes by the standards of Rancho Rajneesh. But for now, the sannyasins like it that way. Their experience at the ranch has left them with an aversion to organizations, and they're wary of taking orders from anyone. They do get together and meditate every once in a while, and there's talk of buying a place for a meditation center. But that's about it. Most Rajneeshis are thinking first about finding a place to make some money and finding a nice place to live. Well, when their world headquarters at Rajneesh Purim collapsed from within, the effects were felt in Europe. Communes in Berlin, Cologne, and Amsterdam operated restaurants and discos that funneled hundreds of thousands of dollars into Oregon. Many of those communes have dissolved, and the businesses that remain are now operated by individuals, not collectives. Rajneeshis tell us the surviving businesses still employ hundreds of sannyasins in half a dozen European cities. But the financial network that tied them all together is gone. The Rajneeshis say the only link now is a spiritual one. But well, with sannyasins scattered all over the world, Rancho Rajneesh itself sits as an almost silent reminder of a bygone era in Oregon history. But there are still bills to pay, mortgage holders and the victims of Rajneeshi poisoning schemes. The Rajneeshis want badly to sell the ranch, but so far that's been easier said than done. The marble welcoming sign that once called sannyasins to the feet of the awakened one is chipped. The first guardhouse, once an outpost for the pervasive Rajneeshi security system, it's empty and violated by vandals. In town, a small cadre of caretakers fights a sometimes losing battle against the encroaching brush. Elsewhere, the landscape remains manicured. The goal for the 15 or so Rajneeshis left minding the store is to sell this empty city with its frayed edges and leave the once thriving commune behind once and for all. A, a rest home operator who wanted to buy it and have it as a rest home community, a retirement community, but more along the dude ranch style. I think this is a perfect place. As sannyasins left the ranch a year ago, commune leaders had high hopes that the property they paid six million dollars for in 1981 could be unloaded for six or seven times that much. After all, there's an estimated 60 million dollars worth of improvements on the ranch including housing for hundreds, a bona fide downtown mall, and an airport. But others were skeptical about such entrepreneurial optimism from day one. They don't have a snowball's chance in hell of getting it back. Only a fool would pay that kind of money. Since then, the asking price has dropped to $28.5 million. The Portland realtor hired to sell the ranch has been giving tours for months. Now he believes an offer is imminent. Recent interest is centered on mining, and mineral samples have been taken from the ranch's barren hills. But whoever buys Rancho Rajneesh would be wise to check with Wasco County planners first. So at one point or another, it'll be back here, and we'll have to make the decision. Ultimately, the county court will decide what can go on at the ranch and what can't. I guess in terms of the county, a best tenant would be one that would not cause the kind of problems that we had to begin with. There's also the matter of state land use laws. The incorporation of Rajneesh Purim has been held to be illegal, so many of the buildings may be illegal as well. The land use watchdogs are keeping a close eye on who moves in. We're interested in making sure that the, the law is followed to the letter, that no one decides to uh, give extra leeway simply because the buildings were built um, under a cloud. But county leaders aren't anxious to bring in the bulldozers. The more valuable the land, the bigger the property tax bill. The Rajneeshis have paid as much as $300,000 a year. No small change in rural Oregon. Well, interestingly enough, even though all the sannyasins here uh, get the newspaper, uh, they're very hungry for news of the ranch in Oregon. Most were unaware of the status and how close it was to being sold, and uh, we're glad I was able to tell them. Pete and Tracy? Ah, for once you were welcome, Scott. That's good news. Why would the Rajneeshis pick Boulder, Colorado for a new site? Well, for one thing, spiritual diversity is nothing new here, and in fact, many Rajneeshis feel right at home. There's a number of meditation centers. There's even a fully accredited Buddhist college, and it's the kind of place where Rajneeshis can walk around with their malas and nobody bats an eyelash. There's also some sort of strength in numbers, and while the Rajneeshis say they're not uh, about to start organizing anything big, they also say it's nice to uh, look up an old friend every now and again and uh, just uh, discuss the old times and talk with somebody who's shared the experiences, tumultuous experiences to be sure, that they've been through. Scott, what about the residents in Boulder? You, you, you made a reference to them, but I'm wondering, is there any fear about the Rajneeshis coming here? 
Well, initially from law enforcement people there was. In fact, a detective from the Boulder Police Department took a trip to Oregon, a three-day trip, where he talked with state police officials, he talked with uh, some sheriff's people, and he also toured the ranch, in fact. He couldn't get in to see Bhagwan's house. That was one of his biggest disappointments. But he was told at that time that most of the people that they would have to worry about have, e have either been deported or in jail right now. So they're not concerned, and they're just treating it like another uh, spiritual offshoot of which they have many here in Boulder. Scott, I'm assuming that Boulder is not the only place where the Rajneeshis have decided to set up shop again. Surely not. Uh, there's a very large uh, community, in fact, a bigger one than here in Marin County, scattered throughout the hills there. There's also quite a few living in uh, Santa Fe and Taos, New Mexico. If you'll notice, these are not exactly utilitarian, working-class towns. The uh, Rajneeshis put a great premium on uh, quality of life, which is a phrase that's bandied about quite a bit, and scenic beauty and uh, the solitude that they can achieve there. So they're, they're picking nice places to live. All right. Thank you, Scott. Scott Miller reporting tonight from Boulder, Colorado. Well, memories and headlines. Scott Miller reporting tonight from Boulder, Colorado. Well, memories and headlines aren't the only thing the Rajneeshis left behind. They also left mountains of consumer goods, most sold to pay off the commune debts. Who can forget the Bhagwan's Rolls Royces? 96 of them guaranteed to stop traffic. Most of them, 84 in all, were trucked off to the Big D, Dallas, Texas, where a private dealer auctioned them off. The last dozen will go on the block this weekend. The Rolls Royce of outhouses ended up serving Oregonians. Three portable outhouses, each seating 23 people, were purchased by Jackson County in the Peter Britt Festival. Some some of the 2,000 tents once used for religious festivals are now keeping Boise Area Boy Scouts dry. And California law enforcement agencies are using the commune's weapons and communications gear, everything from walkie-talkies to bugging devices. If you want to start your own law enforcement agency, it's not too late to pick up some of the last Raj Niche relics. Peace Force shirts, hats and badges are for sale by a Medford second-hand dealer. There are even parking tickets labeled as loving reminders. All remain as a colorful era of Oregon's history. Coming up next.